She had to be kneeling down too because the shelf ah! the aisle is there. What's up? I'm KT Rich and yo, I'm back with a new video. So y'all been waiting to see something scary. We gonna check out something scary. We about to watch Mr. Nightmare and this is one of his new videos. It's called Three Disturbing True Retail Stories. Oh damn. I work at a CVS open 24 hours a day. I've been working at this location for three years now, and I'm one of the higher ups. I agreed to take on the overnight shifts because I believe it helps my chances of getting another promotion, and I like to be on my boss's good side. There would only be one employee working the 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. shift, as that's all that's really needed. Once the pharmacy opens at 9 a.m., that's when business usually picks up. The two employees before me left after I was set up. At my hours, so few customers come in that my job varies from cash register to simply stock working. The beeper at the front door that would go off would alert me when a customer would enter so I'd know when to go back to the register and wait. A few hours into my shift, I went back to the register to check my phone which I had charging, and I had a new voicemail from an unknown number. I pulled it up and listened. It was some weird voice on the other end that I couldn't tell belonged to a male or female and I couldn't understand what they were saying. Shit, be like that sometimes. It's terrible. The transcription was unavailable for that reason. Obviously, I just ignored it because everyone gets weird calls once in a while. As I continued doing stock work, my phone started to go off. I pulled out my phone and saw a bunch of texts from that number that just called. The first text said, call back when you can. The second one said, I know you're at work, I'm coming to visit. The third one said, what time are you working till? I had no idea who this could be. I texted back, who the hell is this? The typing bubble popped up for like 20 seconds, then it went away, they didn't respond to that. Okay, a uh, little unnerving, yes, but I still had to go about my work. Eventually I heard the ding by the front door alerting me someone entered, so I went back to the register and waited. I didn't see anyone walking around though, and I waited there for quite a while actually. Eventually, I just decided, okay, that's enough waiting, and went back to stocking shelves. I'd say it was around 2 a.m., a couple hours into my shift. I got a new cart full of items from the back section, this time beauty products, the second aisle in the store. I brought the cart over there, and noticed a woman in the corner of the next aisle over, the first aisle. I She's still in! Stepped into that aisle and looked down, asking if she needed any help. Nah. She down at one of the products in the corner. She's still in. Acknowledge me. Didn't know if she heard me or not, but I just felt awkward. So I That's because she's still in. I told you. I left her alone. I walked back to the register just to wait there for her to finish up. And then I started getting more texts from that number. I was basically getting spammed with random messages that made no sense. Except one that said, I'm here. So I said, screw it. And I called the number. I heard a ringing sound coming from inside the store, and my heart started beating oh, twice as fast. I felt a heavy feeling in my throat. I canceled the call, and the ringing stopped. Wait! I brought myself to walk over to that last aisle again, where the ringing was coming from. That woman was still there in that corner. I yelled, joke's over, I'm calling the cops, whoever you are. I almost knew it had to be some girl I knew playing a prank on me. I went back around the counter because for some reason I felt safe. I don't know, man. A chick would not take a prank this far. I really didn't want to call the police, though. Instead, I called my best friend who picked up on the first try. Oh, that's smart. Anyone we knew with brunette hair who had my number and would be playing a prank on me like this. He guessed a few names, but based on the body shape of that woman, it was none of them. My friend told me to just stop being a pussy since it was a girl. I told him, all right, whatever, and hung up the phone. I was about to suck it up and walk over there when I noticed her, peering half of her head from around the corner of the beauty aisle. She had to be kneeling down too because the shelf ah! in the aisle is lower than the rest. Damn, this bitch is crazy. blood trickling down her cheeks. She was smiling and I heard her making these fuck- Oh, this is a ghost face. crazy bitch. This is a ghost. Like she cut the skin on her cheeks right next oh, to her. Oh, I told you it's a ghost crazy bitch. Yes. This was when I realized she wasn't our age. She looked oh, like she was anywhere from 30 to 40. No, get back! I took one get step out of here, George. And I recognized her. It was this lady with serious mental issues who had I come prepared. a fake account before. 
And as far as I knew, she was dangerous and was supposed to be in some psychiatric center. She must have gotten my number through my Instagram, which I have set as a public. So there's a real case, bitch. Public figure profile, which includes my phone number. Seeing half her bloodied face peering at me, smiling, made me want to yak. I yelled at her to get away or I'd stab her. Of course, a complete bluff. I ran to one of the back aisles and hid from her, and I only sighed a breath of relief when I heard the beep of the front door go off. I went to go check if she was still there, but she wasn't. And so I called 911 and had the police take a report, showed them the CCTV footage, and warned them of her name and that she had serious mental issues. The officers were very nice and told me they'd be in the immediate area in case she returned. I blocked the number she was texting me from, and I like to think the police contacted her family. I doubt it. It don't seem like she got a family. I used to work the dairy aisle in a grocery store. It was the worst job I ever had. A lot of heavy lifting, expired dairy products, and shivering. The big dairy cooler was in the back of the store in the area where all the groceries yet to be stocked on the shelves were kept. I would often just chill in the dairy cooler, no pun intended, because the supervisors on duty would never think to check on me in there. I'd bring a hoodie just so I wouldn't get cold. Anyway, one night I was working till 10 p.m. The store got quiet past 9. However, Mr. Senko, the supervisor who was a pain in the ass, was on duty. So after stocking the milk cartons one more time for the night, I brought everything to the back area again. On my way back to the dairy cooler to just hide and chill in there, I saw very briefly, for like half a second, the face of someone through the glass of the cooler door. But they either just ducked down or faded away out of my view. Who was in there? I went through the doors to see, and got hit with that blast of cold air and the loud sound of the giant refrigerator blowing cold air into the room. Boxes, pallets, and crates of milk everywhere, but no immediate sight of anyone. There were many places to hide behind the giant piles of boxes, but no one was in there. So I did my usual. I sat on an empty milk crate hidden behind a big pile of boxes. Then suddenly, the lights in the cooler turned off, and it went almost pitch dark, besides the light from outside the cooler coming in through the glass of the door. I had a mini freakout because I thought Mr. Senko knew I was in here and was basically signaling for me to come out. I stood up and came out from around the boxes, and then I froze. Something was blocking partial view of the two cooler doors. There was a silhouette of a really tall person right in front of me. It couldn't be Mr. Senko, he was kind of short. The figure right in front of me had to be a foot taller than me. Suddenly, the light flickered back on, and the figure I thought I saw right in front of me was no longer there. I nervously walked around where I thought I saw something standing. I even waved my hand through the air in that spot. I somehow felt like I wasn't alone in there. Oh, you wasn't! The doors and shut the dairy cooler light. I peeked inside now with the light off, but that figure I saw in there just a moment ago was still gone. I threw my apron off and clocked out early. I didn't care if Mr. Senko would be mad. I just needed to get out of there. That was the one paranormal thing to ever happen in my life. I do overnight stock shifts for various local Lowe's home improvement stores. All I do is work whichever specific location needs me for the night, usually dependent on which location is having the most business. My job is to unload trucks, operate forklifts in the back section and throughout the store, and do night stock work. The trucker on duty that night was Paul, the only other guy with me that night. Once we successfully unloaded the truck, he helped me sort them in the back room before going off to do another pickup with the truck. So I was left alone to continue work as normal, nothing I wasn't used to. I'd scan the new shipments to take inventory, then I'd bring the items out to the floor and stock shelves with the new items. That's exactly what I was doing, going back and forth from the back warehouse section to the main floor stocking shelves, sometimes using the forklift. I was scanning items with the inventory gun towards the back section of the warehouse when a loud crash scared the living shit out of me, to the point that I jumped and turned around mid-air. It was a big box that had fallen off a large pile of pallets full of unopened packages. The box's contents didn't spill out, the box was still intact. So I went to get the forklift to lift the packages back up onto the pallet. It was at this point I smelt a funky odor, but it wasn't the most uncommon thing ever in the warehouse. 
so I continued my work. At some point later that night, I turned the corner into the paint aisle and saw someone walking all the way down at the other side. They were dressed in dark clothes. No one else was supposed to be in the store, and they weren't wearing work clothes. So I shouted, hey. They turned around, and when they saw me, they took off running down an intersecting aisle. Naturally, I yelled again and started chasing after him. Of course, when I got to the intersecting aisle, he was nowhere to be seen. He could have been in any aisle by then. Still, I did one quick jog down the middle aisle to look through all the intersecting aisles, but I didn't see anyone. I called anyone who I thought could have possibly been on duty, but nobody even picked up. Nope. I was at a loss for who that could be. I had to assume it was an intruder. I returned to the warehouse, and as I walked through the doors, I heard another crash from the back section of the warehouse. I ran in that direction and discovered something had fallen from the same pile of pallets and boxes. That was it. I had to run and grab a ladder to go climb up the stack of boxes. When I got to the top, run! I realized there was a perimeter, or wall rather, of packages and boxes. Look, don't go to the scene of the crime. Go from the scene of the crime. Surrounding one big hole. In this hole, there was a homeless looking man dressed in all black. The same man I had just seen. Dad, is that you? This was where the odor from earlier was coming from. He looked at me, and I looked back at him, speechless. I didn't know what to say. He got up and seemed as though he were coming to lunge at me. I quickly stepped down the ladder low enough to where I could jump off. Then I ran down the aisle of the warehouse and stopped. I got on the phone with the police and a couple officers showed up 15 minutes later. Of course, the little secret home that man had made between boxes was empty now. He evacuated with all this stuff. Camera this footage- of This nigga made a secret home up in Lowe's? Damn. Later revealed that man had been staying in that little secret spot he created for a whole week. No one really checks the camera footage unless there's a reason to. That's how he got away with it unnoticed for so long. That's crazy. If you ain't a step ahead, well, you might as well be dead. But what y'all think about this scary story by Mr. Nightmare? I'll be checking out some more of your scary stories. I didn't get scared this time. Let me tell you a few things that scare me. That way, if you guys have any recommendation, you can either IG me or send them in the comment section below. Jump scares. Bro, jump scares? I'm saying, if it's creepy and it comes out of nowhere, chances are it's gonna get me, okay? It's just what it is. Two, freaky things. I'm talking supernatural. I'm talking like, you know, super paranormal type of freaky things. Yeah, that's gonna get me. Why? Cause, well, hey, I've seen things as a child, so I don't really wanna talk about it. It freaks me out. And third, blood. Lots and lots of blood. If there's blood, hey, I'm probably not gonna be able to look at it. Chances are, I'm gonna look away. It's just what it is. Gory, freaky, shit like that, it gets me every time. So if you guys have any of those, go in and send that and I'll give it a whirl. All right, y'all, I'm about to get out of here. Stay tuned for my next, I'm out. Oh, damn.